Welcome everyone to today's webinar, The Digital Future of Managing Chronic Conditions. I'm Erica Carbajal with Becker's Hospital Review, and on behalf of Becker's Healthcare, thank you for joining us today. Before we begin, I'm just going to walk through a few quick housekeeping instructions. So first, we'll begin today's webinar with a presentation, and we will have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. So you can go ahead and submit any questions that you might have throughout the webinar by typing them into that Q&A box you should see on your screen. Today's session is being recorded, so it will be available after the event, and you can use that same link that you used to log into today's webinar to access the recording. And if at any time you don't see your slides moving or if you have trouble with the audio, try refreshing your browser, and you can also submit any technical questions into that same Q&A box. We're here to help with that. With that, I'm pleased to welcome our moderator for today, Jason Marshall. Jason serves as the Senior Manager of Healthcare Marketing for Salesforce. Jason, I'll now turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Erica. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Marshall from Salesforce, and I want to welcome you to today's webinar. We're going to focus on how providers can reimagine the future of managing chronic conditions with a secure, scalable, and intelligent platform. You know, when we talk to provider organizations we're close to, we see them really embracing the digital transformations that they have had to adapt during the pandemic and, and see many of them accelerating their longer-term strategies for enhanced digital capabilities to meet patient needs. And we're really grateful to have three customers with us to share their insights with you. And we also want to thank everyone for taking the time out of the day to join us, and especially want to commend the healthcare organizations on this call and beyond who are on the front lines and have risked so much for so many. So before we get started, we want to remind everyone that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and to make investment decisions based on currently available products as we may be demonstrating some forward-looking innovations. I want to quickly uh, introduce the thought leaders on this call who have been working together over the last few weeks to ensure that we're sharing some insightful and engaging content. Wendy Coffin joins us from outside Boston and leads our global provider strategy at Salesforce. Chelsea Lockhart joins us from New Orleans and leads CRM and marketing strategy at Oshner Health. Jason Winnell is the Chief Technology Officer at LifeSpark Senior Care, and he joined us from Minneapolis. And then Keith Algazine joined us from Albany, New York, and is the CEO and founder of UCM Digital Health. And we want to thank our three trailblazing customers for joining us who are going to speak to their digital transformation journeys. So we want to be very thoughtful with our agenda uh, so it could be as relevant for all of you as possible. Uh, to start, we're going to have Wendy share Salesforce's point of view on how providers can leverage a comprehensive digital engagement platform to manage chronic conditions and be faster and more relevant to patients than ever. Then Amanda from Salesforce is going to give us a demonstration to show how these digital engagement tools work in practice to reduce this, the significant burden that chronic conditions place on the healthcare system, as well as complement and enhance patient experience. They're going to hear from Jason Lifespark, Chelsea from Oshner, and Keith at UCM Digital Health. And then we're going to end with a fireside chat from our speakers and then a Q&A. So you should all feel free to submit a question. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Wendy. Wendy, over to you. Thank you, Jason. Um, I'm really excited for today's webinar. And as Jason mentioned, joined by three absolutely visionary healthcare leaders. But before we get started, really just want to take a moment to echo Jason's thoughts and, and send a special thank you out to all of our frontline and essential workers for all that you have done and continue to do. And we understand that it may be a tough period for many organizations right now. So we really want to thank you for joining us today and just know that we are so grateful to have you here with us as we look at the positive changes that we're poised to make across our healthcare industry. This really is, you know, an exciting time uh, for healthcare and technology because we've finally reached a point of no return where health and tech industries are becoming one. And while this pandemic has undoubtedly posed many challenges, there is a silver lining. Technological innovation in healthcare is no longer a nice to have, it's a need to have. And more importantly, it's achievable. The health system of the future will be digital, personalized and population focused. And this really reflects the deep and profound shift in perspective around healthcare towards well-being and wellness, greater convenience and flexibility, self-direction and personalized experiences. And one critical area in need of that digital transformation is chronic disease management. And although chronic disease management is a global problem, let's take a look at chronic diseases in the U.S. With six in 10 adults in the U.S. having a chronic condition, and four in 10 having two or more chronic conditions. 
But this doesn't just affect elderly populations. As approximately 25% of children in the U.S. between the ages of two and eight have chronic health conditions such as asthma, obesity, other physical conditions, and behavior and learning problems. So you can begin to see why treating and managing chronic conditions and mental health take up nearly 90% of the $3.5 trillion in U.S. healthcare spending. So any technology applied to improve healthcare delivery and streamline operations will need to ensure cost optimization. As we look, as the industry continues to validate the need for innovation in this space, really reflected in the mergers and acquisition space, as well as growing investor funding in chronic disease and digital health companies. And with the estimated market for global chronic disease solutions expected to generate 10.3 billion by 2024, we can expect these trends and activities are gonna continue. Digital health is, is accelerating change simultaneously in the industry right now. And on several fronts in the healthcare ecosystem. And shifting the care uh, location to anywhere, anytime, and the care model to preventative, personalized, and participatory. But what the pandemic is really bringing to the forefront is how our homes are destined to play a central role in the healthcare system of the future. It's more than just care moving outside of the traditional four walls of the hospital. It's about continuously refining the segmentation of the population by disease groups and risk categories and developing preventative and personalized interventions for each patient. So what we need to do in this new day and age is monitor patients wherever they are, using several streams of available data and engage with them meaningfully in reaction to their lifestyle habits to optimize their health outcomes. And once we receive all of this information, we need to be able to engage with patients accordingly. Healthcare organizations need to know if patients aren't moving from their desk or their couch, or if they aren't taking or can't afford their medications, or are neglecting their healthy eating plan, or that their blood sugar levels are spiking. Digital engagement is an imperative across all of healthcare to drive truly personalized care and ultimately well-being. So by offering real-time continuous engagement based on a wealth of incoming data, providers and other stakeholders can tailor care accordingly. Remember, a zip code can tell us just as much about a patient's health as their genetic code. So we need to be able to make sure that providers have access to all pertinent clinical and social determinants data to be able to tailor care accordingly. So as we look at this, there really are three key areas that healthcare organizations will need to focus on in order to successfully reduce this burden. Leveraging data-driven insights and analytics to risk stratify patients and create hyper-individualized health planning for each person's health risk, their lifestyle choices, and their health goals. By incorporating a secure, scalable, and intelligent platform to generate and surface data to streamline business critical workflows that will decrease friction, allowing providers to improve the patient experience, to manage cohorts of populations more effectively, and ultimately be able to deliver care proactively. And finally, organizations need to develop an expanded digital engagement plan that goes beyond sick care to healthfulness, to inspire, encourage, and teach individuals to make positive care and lifestyle choices and be engaged in and accountable for lifelong health. Delivering the right care in the right place and at the right time should not imply there is a singular task to complete. In reality, often you need to engage patients and their families for multiple things at one time, and needs and conditions are dynamic. So this in many ways is an ongoing conversation, especially as patients look to live well with their disease and age with chronic conditions. So investing in a secure and scalable platform allows health organizations to develop the intelligent workflows to deliver high-touch, patient-centric engagement using AI and automation to address the dynamic healthcare needs of the consumer. And then finally, once consumers are engaged, they're more likely to adhere to their treatment plans, treatment and care plans, uh, the better, driving better outcomes and really reducing costs. 
So the shift to digital is happening quickly, and that's why Salesforce provides customers with a completely secure, scalable, and intelligent platform to meet the complex needs of the digital health systems of the future. So I would like to turn it over to Amanda Staggs, a senior solution engineer on our healthcare and life sciences team, to show how the Salesforce Patient 360 provides organizations with the agility to scale quickly, surface that right data, improve the patient experience, and drive better outcomes. Amanda? Thank you, Wendy. Hello, my name is Amanda Staggs, and I'm a solution engineer at Salesforce, focusing in healthcare and life sciences. Today, I'm going to show you a brief demonstration of how Salesforce is helping companies reduce the significant burden that chronic conditions place on the healthcare system. Utilizing an integrated digital backbone, the Salesforce solution maintains a population level focus while reducing friction in the individual's experience and delivering comprehensive personalized care. Keep in mind that what you'll see today is just a small part of what Salesforce has to offer. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Sam Peterson. Dr. Sam has spent the last six years as the Medical Director of Population Health and Chronic Disease for McConaughey Health. McConaughey Health utilizes multiple EHRs and data sources. Dr. Sam wants to be able to gain a greater understanding of the patient population, identify evolving trends, and stratify high-risk patients. Let's take a look at how we can help aggregate all of that data and make it actionable. Using Tableau, McConaughey Health can pull in data from many disparate data sources and bring everything into one place for analysis. They can connect to patient information from their various EHRs and data sources by using Tableau's native connectors to SQL Server, Snowflake, and more. And they can also connect and bring in public data. In this case, McConaughey Health has brought in a public data source with daily air quality to see how this could impact their patients with chronic conditions. After connecting all of the data sources, McConaughey Health can easily create a dashboard that they can monitor with all of the information Dr. Sam needs in one single report. Dr. Sam has a regional view across the top with the latest numbers for COVID cases, patients with the flu, and air quality index. These facts provide an important context for her as she's looking at her population of patients with chronic conditions. Dr. Sam now has a holistic view below of McConaughey Health's chronic disease program, including patient referrals, readmissions, and no-show rates. As we continue to drill down into the detailed data points, you can see how the same set of data is available for everyone, including the care coordinators. Next, I want to introduce you to Melinda Smith, who is a diabetic care coordinator with McConaughey Health. Using Tableau, Melinda is able to see a broad view of patients with chronic conditions and drill into patients entering the diabetes program. Melinda is able to drill down into new patient referrals to the diabetic program, see who is scheduled, and quickly identify patients at the highest risk. Since Melinda wants to focus on those patients she's going to be speaking with today, she selects the Scheduled Today option. By filtering to those with appointments today, she can see the higher risk patients. Melinda can see that Charles Green in particular has a higher risk than the other patients. Melinda notices an anomaly with Charles' blood glucose level that she can address during their virtual visit later today. Melinda is able to jump straight into his health cloud record. As a new referral to the McConaughey Health Diabetic Program, Melinda is now able to drill down into Charles Green's record to view his information. HealthCloud offers templates that allow McConaughey Health to standardize care plans and digitize manual tasks to empower the care team. Using advanced scheduling functionality from partners like Schedulo, Melinda has a complete view of care team availability and clinical certifications to select the best team to manage Charles's care. McConaughey Health provides all members of the diabetic program with a McConaughey Health kit that includes a glucometer and scale to help manage their conditions and live a healthier lifestyle. Melinda can see Charles's connected devices and see that he has been taking his blood sugar regularly. She can also verify the out-of-range alert that she saw in Tableau earlier. When Melinda talks with Charles, she can verify this reading and talk with him about using his glucometer correctly and can also assign him to a glucometer training module if necessary. Now we're going to see Charles's experience with the digital patient journey. Five days prior to his virtual visit, Charles receives a text message inviting him to log into the McConaughey Health portal. When Charles logs in, he's prompted to verify his demographic information and his preferences. This ensures that McConaughey Health is communicating with Charles in his preferred manner. You can see that the survey is dynamic, so if Charles answers that something is incorrect, he has the option to provide his correct information. He can also rank his preferred communication method depending on how he wants to communicate with McConaughey Health. Once Charles verifies his contact information, he's then directed to the home page. You'll notice that he has an alert with a link to patient onboarding materials to help him prepare for his upcoming virtual visit with Melinda. Charles is also able to view his upcoming appointment. Once he drills into it, he can either confirm or reschedule the appointment. 
Charles clicks the confirm button to let us know he's coming. Now that it's time for his appointment, Charles logs into the desktop view. You'll notice that he has additional options on desktop as Salesforce is configurable between devices. Charles lets Melinda know that he's ready for his virtual visit by clicking on the live agent icon to enter the virtual waiting room and receive a link for his virtual visit. Utilizing virtual visit technology from partners like SiteCall, Melinda and Charles are able to walk side by side through onboarding Charles to the McConaughey Health Diabetic Program. First, Charles can see a list of his medications. Melinda uses her view inside of Salesforce to see the same list of medications and can also drill down into the details if Charles has questions. Next, Charles can see his household. This helps him know each person involved in his care, both at home and with Makana Health. Melinda can access the same information to help Charles identify other individuals to help manage his care. With advanced scheduling functionality from our partner Schedulo, Melinda can help Charles set up his follow-up appointments that are convenient for Charles to encourage program compliance. Charles is now able to see his future tasks and appointments. Using the timeline feature, Melinda can see a chronological view of these items and can drill into them for additional details. As we saw earlier, Charles is using the Makana Health Connected devices to help him manage his care. Both Charles and Melinda are able to see the device data as well as the device information. Once the visit wraps up, Melinda can mark that task as complete within Charles's care plan. She reminds Charles to continue to access the content inside of his patient portal, including his access to Trailhead. Trailhead offers gamified learning that allows Charles to continue to educate himself, fill in health literacy gaps, and address the ongoing informational support as he lives well with his condition. McCon Health can continue to maintain a lifetime engagement with Charles using Salesforce. As Charles and other patients working with McCona Health continue to be more digitally connected, care coordinators, case managers, and other leaders at McCona Health can use the various reports and dashboards inside of Salesforce to keep track of program adherence, enrollment, portal usage, as well as program referrals. This helps McCona Health continuously evolve the segmentation of the population, not only by disease group and risk category, but also by other factors like zip code and environment, while refining the preventative and personalized interventions for each patient. Thank you so much for your time today. Back to you, Wendy. Thank you for that amazing demo, Amanda. And now I'd, I'd like to introduce you to our first trailblazer, Jason Winnell, Chief Technology Officer at LifeSpark. Jason? Hello, everyone. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, thanks for having me on here. I'm excited to be a part of the group. Um, so I'll start off by just telling you a little bit about LifeSpark. We're a senior services company providing pre and post acute care um, with, uh, within the home. And so everything from primary care in the home, home care uh, to hospice. And most recently, in the last few years, I really focused on being a senior strategy partner to payers and providers in population health. And so um, we have built what we call an alternative delivery system coming from the community side as opposed to from the, from the provider side to really um, plug and play and connect all these services into one experience. We really look at ourselves as that experienced company to come alongside the, the, the um, senior and their family and be a, that longitudinal relationship over five to seven years um, to help um, to curb the cost and increase their experience and wellness journey. So when we look at uh, what we go after, we call this our villain. We call the sick care roller coaster towards dependence. Um, many of you are familiar with this journey, and the current system is set up well for this. Um, uh, let's, let's call our member Betty. Betty has a life challenge, falls, breaks her hip, goes to the hospital, goes through a 30-day rehab, only to be kind of left alone until something happens next, and this pattern continues until she has to be put into a senior uh, living facility. At LifeSpark, uh, we combat this by using technology as well as personal advocacy or concierge services where we um, provide Betty with a life manager as well as the right data and insights to get more proactive in our care. And so we get up that roller coaster towards better understanding root cause of what caused the first um, fall, for example. And then we come alongside Betty throughout her experience and try to level out, um, level out this line so that there's less, less episodic, reactive, um, expensive procedures, and we can be more proactive in our care. We do that via the, what we call the LifeSpark experience, where um, we focus on uh, our, our members' complete uh, holistic view of their life. So from purpose, their passion, their identity, their finances, their home and safety, 
And so we start here, as opposed to starting at the care plans, we call it this discovery. We create a life plan instead of a care plan that connects all these social uh, determinant pieces. And uh, we come alongside that member with that life manager to help manage this. And to do that at scale, obviously, um, technology is a big part of our solution. And so I'll touch on each of these different components of what we are um, utilizing at LifeSpark. The first is that kind of middle area with the layers that's called our electronic life record. And so this is where we merge uh, medical records. Um, we get third party data, demographic, behavioral, consumer data. And then the top layer is all of our first party data. So every interaction, um, we're tracking every phone call, every visit, et cetera. And we collect those not just you know, using data for data sake, but then we deliver insights to kind of the right place, right time, uh, as was shown some, some in that demo. And so here we, per, we have built out our professional portal on top of Health Cloud, uh, where we deliver those real-time insights and as well as more uh, predictive and prescriptive um, data within the workflows of our life managers. And you'll see there on the right is a custom application we built on, on Health Cloud called um, Life Planning, where we actually um, not only kind of create this plan, but manage it uh, through the entire uh, Health Cloud uh, product. Secondly, we utilize that data, our ELR data, um, for our omni-channel activation platform. Again, this is built on Marketing Cloud, where uh, we've built out very unique customized um, journeys that's very personalized to each of one of our members, where we mix automated email, chat, as well as high-value promotions, such as wearables, um, to connect and engage with our members. And then lastly, um, we provide uh, the right experience, uh, a different experience to the client and their family. Uh, and we utilize um, all of this data as well as Health Cloud to manage that relationship and those experiences. And so we couldn't do this at scale without the Salesforce uh, ecosystem. And so happy to be here um, chatting with you all about how we can utilize data and be better at managing these chronic conditions. Back to you, Wendy. Thanks so much, Jason, for sharing the amazing work that you and the LifeSpark team are doing. Um, now I'd like to introduce uh, Chelsea Lockhart, Manager of CRM and Marketing Strategy at Oshner Health. Um, Chelsea, looking forward to hearing your story. Yeah, thanks, Wendy. So glad to be here. So I'll kick off telling you all a little bit about Oxner. So Oxner is the largest health system, or not-for-profit health system in Louisiana. We're the largest private employer in the state, and we're slowly expanding across the Gulf Coast. So we make up a ton of partnerships, a ton of affiliations, and as you can imagine, with a health system of our size, there's a lot of data that comes along with that. So we are very lucky to have the Salesforce platform to help us make use of all of that. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about how Salesforce has changed our approach in chronic disease management. So we really focus on pulling all this data together from across our enterprise to have relevant conversations with people to find them when they're really most interested in their care. So what we used to do was really this siloed messaging of you go out to your mailbox, you have this cardiology mailer waiting on you. And it's because, you know, we had some data that maybe showed you were at risk for needing this care and we're hoping that you get this mailer and maybe it's the right time and maybe you're thinking about your health care and maybe you'll come in. Well, fast forward to today and because we have all of this connected data, we're really able to have holistic conversations with people triggered on what's happening to them in their health record. So you can see this transition here to this really siloed message to more of here's all the different things we know about you. Maybe it's your birthday. Now it's time to talk to the experts. Here's all the different ways we're trying to engage you and get all of this data from you. So how do we make this happen? And of course, we always joke um, at Oxford that it's the magic of Salesforce that Can you lose Chelsea? Chelsea, do we lose you? Okay, I think we might have lost maybe some technical difficulties. So maybe at this time, if we, get, if we can get Chelsea back later, we will, but may, maybe at this time, uh, let's move to, let's move over to uh, Keith Algazin, CEO and founder of UC, to share UCM's vision for, for digital healthcare. So Keith? Um, thanks. Hopefully we'll get uh, Chelsea back, but, but thank you, Wendy. Um, so I, I like to start out by asking everyone a question. If, if I were to ask you the question,
can and should all care begin digitally? What would you think about that? Now, now pre-pandemic, I would often get sort of either the, the, the scrunched eyebrows like, come on, you're kidding me, or I'd get the up-in-the-air eyebrows eye roll saying, there's, you know, okay, dreamer, there's no way that can happen. But post-pandemic, we're starting to get a lot more head nods. And, and we like to break it down pretty simply here into bookends. Think about it this way. All of our life-threatening, our most life-threatening emergencies, how do they begin? Someone picks up the phone and dials 911. So they begin digitally. And then I'll take it all the way to the other end of the extreme right now. If you just had a question, you didn't even need to talk to anyone, but you just wanted to learn a little something about healthcare, what would you do? Well, you'd probably Google it. So if our most life-threatening emergencies can and do begin digitally, and our most simple interactions begin digitally, can't everything else also begin digitally? And the answer is it can. And we at UCM, we are enabling our partners health plans and health systems that are up the risk curve to begin a virtual integrated health system model. But you have to start with all care beginning digitally. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. So why is this important? Because it's, it's not just about what you're going to do, but if you don't understand the why behind it, you won't get your people to engage both patients and, of course, your team members, the providers that are going to be providing care in this ecosystem. Well, it's pretty simple. The digital and the physical world have officially collided, and our patients, which is who we all serve, they want this. They want predictable, affordable, and convenient care. And the only way to truly deliver a virtually integrated system is to do it through a digital first. So we leverage Salesforce to really build a system that pulls everyone together. A single shared view from claims data from health plans, distilling it into clinical insights, EHR and health information exchange data from providers, and of course, pulling all that together so that patients get the best care possible. The other amazing thing that Salesforce allows us to do is to not only create a platform bringing payers, providers, and patients together, but allows us to create an ecosystem, an ecosystem that enables our partners to do things like bring in 911 for emergencies. Instead of Google, integrate up to date so that patients get more relevant, more evidence based information. Maybe you have employers, brokers, TPAs that you're building plans with as a health system or a health plan. All of this is possible by leveraging and building off of Salesforce. So, just a quick example. You need a COVID test, you can log on, you can immediately interact with a bot, you can quickly learn about it through videos or through educational reading materials, through the highest evidence-based content of WK, and then of course, push a button and you can order a test or get to a clinician. And on the back end, again, using the platform here, you can take claims data and distill it into usable insights to know immediately, maybe the patient's calling about a cough, but you find out that they haven't taken their Lasix in four months uh, through the claims data. The EHR data can be pulled in. And of course, the marketplace, as we use WK as an example, all can be done here and be enabled for our partners. And it all comes down to this. <laughs> Begin all care digitally. The results are amazing. You can have care within minutes. You can have patient satisfaction that is unparalleled, and you can save significant dollars. And, and this is sort of the, 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 the end goal that we're all looking for as we look to build our health systems of the future, which really are a true virtually integrated system with payers, providers, and patients all working together. Keith, thanks Wendy, for sharing that. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, and, but it wouldn't be a webinar in, in the pandemic times. Uh, the great news for everybody is we have Chelsea back on. So yes, Chelsea, I'd love I'm to, hoping you guys to pick up where you are. <laughs> yeah, we great. Can. I was going to make a 2020 joke, but of course, you know, the fun just continues. So as I was saying, <laughs> through the power of Salesforce, we're able to connect all of this data across our enterprise and feed it into marketing cloud to really deploy things to people as it matters to them. So are they taking our HRAs? Are they 
engaging in their healthcare online for the first time? Are we really deploying the messages that matter to them? And then really the, the sweetest thing to me is the dynamic content capabilities that we have, which allows us to really change, you know, for all of these partnerships and brands that we work with, we can transform what patients are seeing really in a touchless way, which takes the pressure off of our team to have to do that and has been such an asset to us. So I'll show you guys a little bit about what it looks like in the moment at Auctioner. So we're going to talk about Matt here. He's got type 2 diabetes. Because of what we have tied together, we're able to send him an email right away letting him know, you know, here's all the personalized diabetes care options we have. And then we're going to talk to him about our digital diabetes program and how he can manage his diabetes from home. He can continue to receive information that's relevant to him. But let's say he falls behind on his annual checkup because, honestly, who doesn't these days? But we're reengaging him right as that's happening and sending him the benefit of staying on top of his care. And, and he's scheduling, and we're able to track all of this in real time. So another great thing about Auctioner and, and the power of innovation in our system is we've really prioritized this digital medicine aspect and really bringing chronic disease management and chronic disease care home into the hands of patients. But because of Salesforce, we've been able to take these tools like our remote monitoring for digital diabetes or hypertension and help people through the onboarding process for those. So maybe we're seeing, we know we shipped you this device, you haven't submitted a reading yet, here's how we can help and get you that message in real time when it matters most to you. So again, by just tying all of this together and really bringing all of this data center stage to meet people where they're at when they need us most, we've really had a transformative experience at Auctioner. And Wendy, throwing it back to you. And that is, thank you so much, Chelsea. And, and uh, and thanks everybody um, in the in the audience certainly for for helping us out and dealing with the uh, <laughs> technical difficulties. So I really want to now um, bring everybody back into a fireside chat and and look at you know 2020 was was a year unlike any other and you know we're still facing unique challenges with new strains, um, vaccine management on on top of this burden that chronic conditions are putting on the healthcare system. So before we we jump to the future, I, I want to get you, uh, everybody's thoughts on transforming while the current landscape is still shifting and changing. Um, and as a former CIO, uh, I know every problem can't be solved and shouldn't be solved with technology. So what role do you all think that technology can play to expand and improve this access to care, uh, especially when you think about the population of, of uh, patients that, that fall into this category? So Jason, let's start with you. Yeah, so um, the role technology can play, and, and you know, I'll speak from LifeSpark's perspective, and that, and I, I know there's already a question on kind of the older population. For us, it's really that customization and personalization that we have to account for um, by a mix of using technology and uh, personal advocacy. So we, we don't, for at least our population, we don't think technology alone is the answer. It's really empowering this trusted relationship um, from what we call our life manager to the member and their family and empowering them with the right data at the right time, as well as um, the right technology in the member's home that's good for them. So we, we use a user-centered design process to work with each user to better understand how we can serve them, what their technology realities are, uh, and then connect them to our, our overall platform. So I think that it can, um, it can reduce cost, it can increase experience, um, but at least for our demographic, it has to come with the right human touch as well. So for us, it's a lot of empowerment as opposed to replacement. Yeah, I'd echo off of that exactly. Uh, for us, being able to have the insight into here's the friction points that people are finding with our tools and how do we jump in to resolve those, maybe with a personal integrated call center touch or with special instructions coming to them on what to do, really tying it all together uh, has helped us elevate these tools even more. Yes, yeah, Keith Douglas in UCM. I, I couldn't agree more with the sentiments and, and really the question because one of the things that, that we say within our walls is, you know, we're a healthcare company that uses technology and builds technology, but, but we're not a technology company. And most people on this webinar are in that same boat. And it's important to remember that. So for us, we have care coordinators and ER docs and ERPAs and paramedics. And it really, if you look down, like what is really special with what we do, it's the human beings. And really, I like to think of it as, the technology should be so good that you don't really even recognize that you're using it. 
um, because it's still all about the personal interaction. So we have a big care coordination center. Um, and at the end of the day, if you got to pick up the phone and call somebody or send somebody to the house or leverage somebody in the community to help you, um, you know, there is no perfect easy button with, with any of this, especially um, the population we're talking about today. Yeah, and I know it's it's coming across too in some of the questions from the audience, uh, and even my own background in the post-acute space is it's often um, you know a lot of interactions with not just the patients but their family members or caregivers or even even close friends. So, you know, what data did you all find most helpful as you as you thought about you know integrating data into Salesforce and or into a uh, CRM like system and and really using that to help keep patients engaged and and uh, in their health care. So Chelsea, kind of starting with you on, on that one, what data do yeah, you guys find sure. is most helpful? Right. So we, uh, we were fortunate to have a, a connected database, but it really was not a real-time system for us. So we weren't able to engage with people, you know, as they were scheduling. We had no visibility into what upcoming appointments people had or what they were for. And so really being able to see the, you know, true records in a usable way to leverage our marketing off of was huge for us. But now the deeper insights of is this patient using our messaging platform? Are they scheduling online? That type of um, true data mining has really been a shift for us. But definitely that detailed EMR stuff was big for us. I'll say from a um, standpoint uh, for, for, for the data, one of the, the, the most interesting things that we have found is, you know, as a, as a provider organization and at, at our heart, you know, we're used to EHR data. But when we leveraged the Salesforce Health Cloud to pull health plans claims data and distill it into very usable bits of information, we as clinicians were amazed at how much value that claims data when translated and put in front of a provider's eyes at the time that they, that they are taking care of them, how much that adds to the clinical story because of sort of the fragmentation of healthcare that we know not everybody lives within, you know, one EHR. So that was sort of the, the aha moment for us, uh, leveraging claims data and pulling it into the platform. Yeah, and you know yeah, what I'd lastly, like to hear too, Jason, right, is, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say, is you mentioned three types of data, first party, second, and, and third, and there's a lot of questions coming in on the, from the audience on that. So can you, can you dive a little deeper also yeah. on that when you think about it? Yeah, for sure. Um, something that's really driven us because we care so much around getting upstream and in the community with this holistic approach is all of the third-party data that's out there that we can we can bring in to really understand our members. So we have some, what's called a deep member profile as part of our electronic life record that sucks all that in, claims, EMR, um, as well as all these social determinants. So an example would be loneliness score uh, is, an, is an important one for us. And there's a lot of companies um, giving, you know, that have data like that where we can we can see. But for us, the big deal is closing that last, I think someone talked about closing the loop, that last mile of what interventions actually affect that data is what we're even more interested in as opposed to having on a dashboard, you know, so-and-so has a loneliness score that's high. It's what activity changes that number. And so the more real-time data that we can get is what we're after. Um, so for us, that third-party data around social, and then I'd say the other most effective thing has been real-time ADT data across the entire um, metro area. And so getting that from every hospital system, because we really care about at discharge, there's a lot of opportunity to not only make the experience better for the member, uh, but also um, reduce cost of some of the normal flows, uh, as well as assist them to their home to see how fit their house is things like that in a social setting. So it's been a, that mix of medical, as everyone else talked about, but then social determinant data is, is really big for us of being preventative. Yeah, and Chelsea, you know, there's, there's, a, there's another great question that came in, and it's very relevant, is, you know, when we think about patient literacy and, and, and as we think about that in our engagement strategy, you know, how did you, you, you know, look at that as when you were thinking about identifying those key moments and, and, uh, and, and really engaging further and deeper with patients. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of the approach that we took was working with our providers to say, who's falling through the cracks? Like, where are we losing patients that are maybe not staying up to date on their appointments or not able to get the care that they need, running into, you know, these different social determinants? And how do we make sure that we're finding them at that moment, whether we're feeding that information to a call center rep to reach out to them or whether we're hitting them with this targeted and really 
uh, relevant communication that we're making sure is, is understandable and not written in an extremely technical way. So really leveling with people about managing their care. But yeah, that provider piece of, of finding where those cracks are was huge. And Keith, your your platform is all digital, so there's there's also a number of questions around how do uh, you know senior populations and maybe those that are we'll call them not technologically savvy. How how do you think about that challenge uh, when you're thinking about uh, your platform? Yeah, I think it's um, one of those things that you know if you're going to begin all care digitally, you have to think broadly, right? Because you know, just like the 911 emergency isn't the same as I want to just look something up, uh, you know, for some health information. Um, the the, the 90 year old patient, you know, living at home with no family is very different than a 18 year old, um, you know, living at home with their parents. So we basically look at it as all channels have to be open. So I mean, we we laugh. We say you can just enter the digital platform by an old school phone and pick it up in Rotary. Da -da 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 one, da -da 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 five. Da -da -da. I mean, you can do that all the way up to engaging with conversational AI and everything in between. So if you're going to be sort of a real sort of digital first, you've got to sort of make sure that you meet the patient um, where their needs are. And some might be as simple as I just need to pick up an old school phone and talk to somebody. Uh, and somebody else might be incredibly engaged with all the latest, you know, whiz bang and, and, and widgets and gadgets. So you've got to be broad in your approach. But that's really how we look at it. Yeah, that's you know, it's it's absolutely right. It's not going to be a one size fit all fit all challenge here that we're going to be able to solve. And so, you know, there's a lot of questions coming in, and it's always top of mind for all of us in healthcare when we think about um, security and. And there's been a, a few questions on here coming in through the audience around, uh, you know, how comfortable do you feel in using your platforms um, and, and where does security and HIPAA compliance and, and uh, privacy really come into play for you? So, Jason, as a CTO, I think I'll start with you. Yep. Yeah, so obviously that's top of mind as far as making sure, and, and one of the reasons when we chose the Salesforce ecosystem, um, that was a big part of it, was taking it through our uh, information security uh, protocol, making sure that all the way from marketing cloud to you know whether it's uh, you know text message or email or um, or just interacting with our platform that we are fully um, HIPAA compliant, making sure that we're checking all those boxes and having that conversation with the member. You know, the obviously data privacy to the member and their family is really important. So being very clear up front as we engage with the member around. How, what are we using their data for? And a lot, so, so there's a part of it that is just education as opposed to just a consent form. And so we try to have that open and honest, honest conversation as well with them around here's the types of things we're trying to collect and why. And, um, and, and I think that's an that's a important approach as opposed to just checking the boxes on, a, on being compliant. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think at auction we talk about the same thing, especially as we get to this really personalized marketing. This is a big question that always comes up for us. Like, how do you guys get away with doing this? And I think what we do is we are always working step in step with our compliance team to make sure we're using the data in all the best ways that we can and that are safest for our patients. But we're careful about the messaging that we use. We're, we're you know, not going to talk about someone's diagnosis directly. We're mostly promoting the services that we offer. So there are a lot of um, caveats to the way that we talk about this. But because of the real-time system of the platform, we're just able to really have these conversations, which is more than we ever had before. All right, and so, you know, as, as we think about engagement, you know, um, there's a wealth of data that's, that's in the EMRs, there's a wealth of data and external data sources, and now um, IoT and wearables. Um, so, so, Keith, as you think about it, how does, how does that integrate, and when we think about where the data is flowing, how does that um, enhance or, or change the ability um, and increase access to care? Uh, how do we reach patients that um, may not have great internet connections or, you know, how do, how do we find ways to make care more accessible? Yeah, I think so one of the things that, that we do for accessibility is, you know, it, it sort of goes back to the, the theme you keep hearing here where it's not all about technology and it's not sort of a, a catch-all. Really, you know, 
the technology is enabling the healthcare that, that we all need to provide. So one of the things that, that we do is, is you got to go deep into the community, right? So, for example, our partnerships with, with, with EMS, I could never get that patient to easily change their mind because they always dial 911 when they panic, right? We all know that patient, right? But, but if you engage in the community and you work with EMS, then EMS can show up on scene and they can have a tool with them. And that tool uh, just can be a smartphone. And now all of a sudden, we've, we've connected a patient to an emergency medicine provider and we're able to, you know, give them a NEB treatment or give them a liter of fluids or whatever is necessary to keep them in their home. And then you, you, you can educate the patient that, that 911 isn't the answer, right? Don't call 911 again. You know, here's the new number. Here's the new button to push. Let me see how we can help you. Uh, so there's, and then, you know, community-based organizations and healthcare organizations alike all have stakeholders that, that, in the, that are in the community that really support our patients and if we connect with them, it's amazing how they can be our, our marketing. Call it guerrilla marketing. Call it grassroots marketing. But that we have found to be the most effective tool to just get those hard-to-reach patients. That's excellent. And, and Jason, I know you, you also face those challenges yeah. with, with your population serve, so please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's just take one example. Obviously, um, telehealth, and we actually go beyond that. We call it kind of telepresence, providing our members with this 24-7 one-touch access point to us um, is, is a, an important part to our model. So how do we do that across from rural to metro to different tech challenges? So we, we actually have this kind of combined approach where um, we send out uh, uh, kind of this life, kind of spark squad resource, which is a tech resource to our members' homes with the nurse on that ID to better understand what their situation is. Do we need to provide a pre-network device? Um, can they even work with a touchpad? So as silly as it sounds, sometimes people's fingers are too a callous to even use a touchpad, right? So really figuring out how, how we can serve the member and where they're at and what their uh, environment is and is an important part of our model. But even beyond that, um, we have something called like video backpacks. Uh, I think that was just mentioned where we literally have a preset, uh, preset uh, tele telehealth solution in the backpack ready to go out and so we'll bring it out to a member in the right situation as well. So I think it's a multifaceted approach. It can't, it's not one size fits all as we've talked about. Um, but the, the big challenge is doing that at scale, right? And I think someone talked about how, how do you get paid for all these investments? Um, it has to be, you, ha you have to kind of connect it to the service. And then for us being in population health, it's all around tracking the outcomes of these devices and of these, you know, whether it's a wearable or anything else, how is that engagement leading to better outcomes? And can we see that in both experience and reduction of cost? Um, and so I think it's that combination, but yeah, it has to be a multifaceted approach. I also think even in like the super traditional like health system setting, even being able to reach these, you know, hard to reach people who may not be internet connected, we, even if we're not talking about that population, we still know that our patients hand over hand pre prefer to call us than schedule online or use our landing pages. And I think a lot of people across the country see that, especially in you know rural areas or with older populations. And so getting our call center connected to Salesforce to where when people are calling and they're saying, hey, I got this mailer, the call center rep is able to see the mailer and know the intention of it and help that journey along has been a big um, progress point for us. Yeah, we've seen a lot of of the customers that that uh, that I engage with um, thinking about uh, education and engagement there, and and I think when you start to look at um, how how much education plays in in adherence to care plans, it's 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 critical to be able to gather that information. And so the question, there's a couple of questions here around how you know let's turn it inside to the to the business. How have um, either care manager roles changed and, and how are physicians adapting or, or any clinician actually adapting and embracing sort of this new thought process around uh, care delivery? So Keith, as, a doctor, uh, as the doctor on the call, I think I'll start with you. Uh, I'm, I'm only a PA, so it's like I slept at a holiday, <laughs> but I'll, uh, <laughs> I'm close. So um, no, it's, a, it, it, it's amazing. So um, part of it, you know, we, we were at an advantage being a, 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 you know, founded by, by emergency medicine providers. Um, you know, we really actually built the back end part of this, right? It is the back end and the front end really with the, the, the provider in mind because you can't forget about it, right? You have two stakeholders here, right? You obviously have the patients. That's who we serve. That's our mission. Um, 
But but we have to have our team, our care coordinators, our PAs, our docs, our nurses, our care managers, everybody who's involved has to sort of feel like this is a better, just like we need a better experience for the patient, we need better experience for our team members. So um, I think the, the, the great thing about Salesforce is when you start to sort of build your solutions on top of it, and it's amazing because we're customizable. So we build different solutions for different health plans, for different health systems. But the, the sort of foundational component of it is when, when, when you bring it all into one place, kind of like Chelsea said, it's amazing from clinical claims data to plan design. Even to know that Sally has this Medicare Advantage plan, which has this benefit, and then we're, we're able to triage the patient and navigate them and hold their hand to the next place of care that's even appropriate within their plan design. So I think it really, you do have to take that into account because you know, too often we, we, we sort of forget that the users are also a, a real important stakeholder in this journey. I would echo that so much from our providers as well. Slowly as they've realized what we've done by tying all of this data together, more and more often we're getting questions like, can we find these people with Salesforce? Can we identify this pain point and catch them at the right time because of all this <laughs> exactly. information that we have? Yeah, and so our providers, you know, it's a big transition, especially in the marketing world from these, you know, big, you know, mass outreaches to these tiny one-on-one -on -one conversations and showing them the impact and power of that has really transformed the way they think about it. And I would, I would, I would pile on just from our experience, I mean, being in the, um, you know, making this trusted relationship, this care management model, such a core piece for us. It's, and I think, um, I think Keith, you mentioned this. It's as much of of trying to make the technology invisible. So the, so the more we can do where the technology kind of is in the background. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of things from um, natural language processing to um, even how we show them data and analytics in a more human interface that gives them um, um, natural language to better understand what we're talking about, as opposed to hey provider, go look at this chart of graphics to try to understand um, and and take in what we're saying with the analysis uh, in this dashboard. We want to provide with these insights in real human language, like hey this person's trending towards high isolation. Let's schedule them on an event. Here's the next best action using some of the AI built in with Salesforce. So I think it's human, and the more invisible it kind of becomes, as opposed to here's more data entry for you to do, uh, is obviously you know where we're trying to go with that to make it a better experience. Well, so you all just led me into a question because, of course, the title of today's webinar was the future. Uh, so I'm going to pose this question to the group. Um, you know, as the shift towards towards wellness and healthier lifestyles continues. Um, do you see companies like Peloton and Mirror um, that are bringing exercise and therapy and care, so to speak, uh, as it continues to move to the home, do you see these types of companies um, impacting or accelerating or changing the care delivery model or thinking? I think at Auctioner it already has. Um, as I mentioned before, we're a pretty wide-reaching health system, so we have a gym, and the gym is very uh, on top of what Peloton is doing. And through the pandemic, has launched these you know at-home offerings and classes. And because of Salesforce, we're able to see who's engaging with them and continue to leverage. You know, maybe this would be a good opportunity to send to this population or to share with this population. So it's um, it's already transforming the way that we work. But I am excited to see how it keeps going. Yeah, I would, I would just comment that I think those are just two more examples of the normalization of doing things in your home and being okay with this real-time data collection for your own benefit, um, as well as that real-time data collection, collection that can help us be more uh, proactive in our care, right? So um, whether it's those or whether it's um, a wheel we can put on a walker that shows activity on a walker that gives us that data back, there's so many um, data collection mechanisms now that I, I, I think that uh, that just gets more and more normal and allows us to uh, use data science to make, make sense of that as far as how to care best for this member. So I'm excited about that uh, continued change um, in the ecosystem. And I'll just, I will pile on because one of the really exciting things that, 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 that the Salesforce platform and just thinking of your, yourself as a platform in general does is, I mean, think about it. If you wanted to do all these things yourself, right, you'd have to build them. Like you have to build all these specialties and, and, and build gyms, and maybe you can and maybe you can't. But, but in a world where we are building platforms for our virtually integrated system, you just have to have the right platform and then plug it into it. You don't need to build Peloton. You can 
plug Peloton in. You don't need to build an amazing content. You know, you can plug up to date and WK in. You don't need to create an entire, you know, home delivery prescription system or a home lab test system. You can plug in amazing solutions into your platform. I mean, I, when I just think of us, like, what do we really do at UCM? We are just, we are just the best at the front door from a service and a platform perspective. But what we actually offer is incredible, and it's simply because we are able to plug into this vast ecosystem of innovative partners, both from our, our health plans and our health systems and in our own accord that we find. And that is really the exciting part about the future is leveraging platforms so you don't have to build this all yourself. You can just integrate it all yourself. That's just uh, – that's fantastic, guys. And, and uh, as we're getting up a little closer on time – um, I'm going to end with asking you all um, what your immediate next priorities are as, as we look into 2021 and, and, again, kind of knowing where we are today and what's going on. And so what are your top priorities um, as, you, as you think about uh, your next steps? So for us, um, as we're coming out of, out of the pandemic and out of this, you know, fight, fight our flight response and sort of getting back to accomplishing this growth strategy that we've had, um, I say the theme across the giant list of stuff that we're trying to do, uh, all of it is just getting more data to be smarter about how we're finding people uh, to connect all of these different things we know about our patients to make sure the messaging and the experience that they're getting is most relevant to them. So just the theme of that across the board for the rest of the year. All right, Jason or Keith. Yeah, I can I can uh, go next. I would say it's it's time. We have a lot of these mechanisms, and as as Keith said, the, the platforms built there. For us, it's really kind of um, drawing the this last line of getting the right outcome data to to basically prove the efficacy of activities and interventions. And so that's really the the, the kind of pioneering area for us. If you think about out in the home, the community, social determinants, these are all um, exciting areas. But proving what really moves the needle um, from home care to hospice to, to um, kind of interventions in between acute visits uh, is still pretty, uh, it's pretty green. And so we are evolving kind of our data science department to really focus on um, collecting that right outcome data and connecting it to the intervention and making sure that we're going to be best in the world at the community side of knowing what to do to be more uh, more prescriptive and preventative in our care um, via that data, and and that's a, a big part is getting that the outcomes, and so that takes time, and um, but that's that's kind of a key priority for us in 2021 is making it that last mile. All right, Keith, bring us home. Uh, I, I would I would say you know I'll 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 be really high level because this is something that we talk about in our organization is you know what we sort of bring to you know legacy. Healthcare, right? Big health systems and, and, and health plans is it is our mission to really be the, the entrepreneurs for them. Because one thing that, that entrepreneurs do better than, than legacy players, well, two things. One is the inspiring a mission, right? I mean, it, it's so daunting when you're in the, the big behemoth of a health plan or a health system. It really is. But but how do you inspire change? It comes through looking not at the numbers or the data, it comes to inspiring people to help patients. And then the other thing we do is the ability to move fast. You know, we, we, we help people turn on that entrepreneurial spirit that says, we're not going to be afraid to fail. We're going we're gonna to build something, then we're going to measure the results, and then we're going to iterate. And we're going to just repeat, rinse, recycle that. And, and because of that, we're going be, to be building fast change, not sort of planning change. All right. Well, I want to certainly thank all of you, our, our, our trailblazers, Jason, Chelsea, and Keith, for joining us today and really sharing your vision and insights and strategy with all of us. And I certainly want to thank all of our attendees for joining us today um, and let you know that to learn more about the content that was presented today, uh, please check out the resources section on your webinar console and fill out the post-webinar survey. And certainly wishing you all a safe and uh, healthy 2021. So thank you all so much for attending. Thank you, Wendy.